someone came to me and asked me, um, it was, a, it was a friend of mine and he asked, he had a team down in Orange County and they had a tool that was written entirely in Flash. I, I hadn't worked in Flash since I worked at Warner Brothers and that had been many years. And he said, um, he invited me down to meet his team. I met them. He had a really good QA engineer um, and she was used to working with Selenium in Java. She was very skilled, but <clears throat> this whole Flash thing was kind of a stump for the entire team. How would they automate Flash in uh, this Flash application? And the first thing most people would probably suggest is, well, do you have a Flex API? Some sort of API in the Flash itself that you can make these calls through a script and it would do a function of the application. The answer was no. His team was entirely too small to build out an API and to maintain it. So he just didn't have time for that. But he wanted it automated nonetheless. So um, he asked me over um, dinner one night, could this be done? And I said, yeah, it can be done. You're going to have to use visual automation or screen automation. And what screen automation is that instead of looking for a div tag on a browser, it would look for an image and you would literally take an image capture of this button that says Google search and it looks on the screen for that pattern. This image finds the image and then you say click it and it clicks the image. If you go into a QA interview, don't say that you rely on screen automation or that you even uh, use screen automation unless you're prepared to back it up with some real, unless you leave it at the end after you've wowed them with uh, some programming because a lot of people will hear Sakuli, which is the most common screen automation program and they'll say they immediately think all you're doing in your automation is taking screen captures and automating it and it offends a lot of people from a programming background but it doesn't have to be like that I mean Sakuli can be code that you're, you're writing API calls into Sakuli. Here's an example of that. In this example, we have a Flash application, and I'm actually running through and using some calls to see if an image exists on the screen, and if it does, to go ahead and do various actions. We have some logic here to see if uh, Flash was downgraded, um, which means something for this application. And you can see all kinds of stuff in here, um, different images I'm, I'm either clicking on or waiting for. And that's how I mitigated this particular application. So when it comes to Sakuli, you can use it and you can make it very, very robust, but it has a very narrow place, I think. It has a place where you have a closed source problem. Your problem is that you don't have access to the source code. You don't have access. Well, you may have access to the source code, but nobody has the time to build you an API. And so it's a closed source system. You know, how is Selenium WebDriver going to automate an installed application? Well, it's not. You either need an API to help you automate that, or you're going to have to use something like Sakuli that can actually click on each element inside an installed application. Imagine if somebody asked you, how would you automate Adobe Photoshop? And no, we don't have an API. Well, you could use Sakuli. Open Photoshop, you click on the right buttons, and you get some something to load in as an image, and then you could even verify that the image loaded because it's using image recognition. In another case, I actually had somebody who asked me, he had an application, he was a friend of mine, and he said, you know, I have this app, and we have competitors and I just want to run my competitors app over like many days and I don't want to do it manually and I want to see how it performs I want a real metric so I want it timed between a certain action and how long it takes to do it and I want to see how my app is comparable so um, he doesn't want to violate any EULAs he doesn't want to break any laws he simply wants to you know run this other app just like a human being would run it but he wants a machine to do it so he doesn't have to sit there and do it and in that case it was an installed application and again it had you know this is a closed source application 
um, and we're not going to break it. So we decided, you know, let's use something that doesn't violate any terms of service. We'll simply install it and use Sekuli to iterate um, over the actions we need. Open the app, uh, do the thing he wants done, and then we'll have a little bit of scripting that says start a timer, What get the time now, and at the end of it, what's the time now, and subtract and get how much time difference was between each action. And that gave him a performance metric, and we saved that to a database, and we let, we let this run <clears throat> Uh, about eight for eight to ten hours, and then we got an average um, for performance, and then we compared that to his own application to see how he was performing. And so there, you're using the app just like a human being uses it. So there is a um, there is a, a reason to use Sakuli, um, and it usually comes down to it's either a very complicated thing to test that is more visual, it's outside the web browser realm. Or it is uh, something that is closed source, like a Flash Swift file that your team may have designed and built, but they didn't have the time to put an API in there for you to use. So you've got to click around on things. Um, so Sekuli does have its its um, its optimum place in the world. Where it, it sort of has a drawdown is that when you have changes to your website, well, in regular uh, in web automation. For example, if you have a change to it, you just simply change your code, right? You change a div tag from being main to main page, or whatever they change the name to. Or if they move uh, an image or move a tag around or something, or remove a tag completely, you just adjust your code. In Sekuli, you have to actually adjust the images. So if they simply change the colors of the buttons, you have to recapture those images. So in a way, it's a little bit of a more of a task. But if your application isn't changing more than you know once every six months, then I think you're fine. You just simply have a need for the team to get a performance metric or to have something measured really quick or automate a flow through the app so you can get something out to production. And Sekuli is great for that. I wouldn't use it for everything, um, but I, I would use it where it makes sense. And uh, as for interview questions, I would probably only talk about Sekuli in the most complex of cases, like automating um, closed source software. That's if you're going to be interviewing. Uh, some of my students read, watch this channel. So I, I tell my students um, when they get to a point of interviewing that don't bring Sekuli up until you want to talk about something more advanced that's beyond web automation. Web automation, frankly, is, is easy. When you have to automate something like an installable app and you have no API, that's where you get into a realm of needing Sekuli. Or you are a game tester and you want to test something like Diablo and you need to click around, you need to be able to recognize various information coming to the screen um, they're probably not going to have an API for you. They're, they will have the end, front end for you. And so you can use Sekuli for that. Anyway, that's my little take on Sekuli. I hope it's useful. You, for, you know, for sure, check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, I've even used it as an experiment to violate CAPTCHAs um, on my own website. And I have a link on sdet.us, my website that goes through how to violate a CAPTCHA on my website. So a CAPTCHA that's simple, has numbers or letters, you can use Sekuli to find those numbers and letters in the region and to take the image and to OCR it, turn it into uh, text, and then type that text back into the field. And it works fairly well. So there's a lot of cool applications. I've also used Sekuli to do um, image recognition on car license plates in a video feed. So there's a lot of applications for Sekuli that are really cool. Um, people use them a lot for bots in games like EVE Online, uh, Diablo, and other, other games where they'll use Sekuli to use image recognition to basically uh, exercise the, the game itself. 